My name's Greg, and just on behalf of uh, Bishop Brian, Father Michael, and the St Mary's Parish community, I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome you all here this evening for this very special occasion. Look, I know it's, it's difficult during these COVID socially distanced times, but if you'd like to take the opportunity just to introduce yourself to those around you, if you've got a few visitors here, and I'll welcome them to the, uh, the parish environment. Look, we're just about to begin. Um, so all the best for a good night. Thank you. Good evening all. What a beautiful evening it is too. We're very blessed to have with us tonight Philip Butler and his wife B proud members of our uh, local Indigenous community. They are going to conduct for us a traditional welcome to country. Please be seated and stay seated. Uh, what day, everybody. Um... Mr. Phil Butler, this is my lovely, beautiful wife, Bryony. We just call her B. Uh, we're Budawang people of the Ewa Nation. Uh, just a quick rundown on the Ewa Nation. It um, runs from about the Shell Avenue River in Narra all the way down to Malakuta and inland as far as um, Braidwood, Red Bow, almost Cooma, just inside of um, Jindabyne and right down to the Snowy Mountains. Um, there are 13 mobs, tribes, and family groups that make up the Ewa Nation and we're, um, you know, one of the most northern of them. So um, I just want to say how honoured, not just for myself, but my family is to be part of this um, and to welcome Dustin into our community and to be here for this important day um, and this important moment. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a traditional song in language and then um, a traditional dance. Um, and it's all a welcome one, so it's to welcome Dustin, yourselves, and it's asking... Mirada from the, um, the sea, I mean, sorry, the air, um, which is the white breasted sea eagle, to uh, Maria, the emu on the land, and Marama, the fish on the ocean, to look over us all and keep us all safe while we're in country. Nayanura, Nayanabu, Walawani, Mirada. Mabura gura boga, kaya kai rena wada, kaya kai rena wada. Naya nura naya nabu, walawani mirada. Mabura gura boga, kaya kai rena wada, kaya kai rena wada. So that's our traditional song in language. Um, like I said, I ask for protection from the air, the earth, and then the ocean, um, and then our dance to um, call in the spirits of all these animals to look over us all and keep us safe. Um, Dustin, welcome to the community. And um, once again, my family and myself are very honoured to be part of this. What up? And 
enter his presence, singing his praises. Jesus the Lamb is a risen, worthy of power, wisdom and honor, riches and glory. Please stand. Blessing. He's at a table, he sent us what in scripture the Father had promised. Send out the Spirit, pour out the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit, oh come, Holy Spirit, come, kindle in us the fire of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, come, speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and peace be with you. And welcome everyone as we come to celebrate this night, Justin's ordination, but we also celebrate Mary's support, and the gift that they are to one another, and the gift that they are to this community and to our church. It's really important to recognise that in this sense of diaconate, um, what we call permanent diaconate, but the role of deacon Justin has the, the privilege and the wonder of having Mary to stand by his side, to walk with him and to share that journey. And so Mary, to you tonight, I personally say thank you. As we gather, we come first of all to recognise that tonight in itself is the gift through our baptism. And so we bless water and as I go around the church and sprinkle with the water, the, our baptismal water, Philip will walk with me. And together we bring this sense of our cleansing and our renewal that we are called to, this continual call to conversion uh, in the life of God. 
So tonight, right next to me. If I opened my eyes, I wouldn't see it. My brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water that he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty and ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant up that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, renew us and make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. And together we cry out, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. 
Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Renew in your church, we pray, O Lord, the spirit with which you endowed the Bishop St. Augustine, that filled with the same spirit, we may first thirst for you, the sole fount of all true wisdom, and seek you, the author of heavenly love, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the, the first letter of St. John. My dear people, let us love one another since love comes from God and everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only son so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean. Not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father sent his Son as Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards ourselves. God is love and anyone who lives in love lives in God and God lives in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs>
Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You must not allow yourselves to be called rabbi, since you have only one master, and you are all brothers. You must call no one on earth your father, since you only have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor must you allow yourselves to be called teachers, for you have only one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant, Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and anyone who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Let Justin, who is to be ordained a deacon, come forward. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiring among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we choose this man, our brother Justin, for the order of the diaconate. idea of appearances matter more than they should. However, Jesus teaches us that what we do flows from who and what we are. We have the ability to enlighten the world with the message of the gospel because our lives have been transformed by that gospel and now we ourselves are called to be light for others. Tonight, we come to ordain Justin to the diaconate. As I said at the beginning, we also come to recognise the gift of Mary and Justin in their marriage. The reason for this is that it is through their marriage that they have first enlightened the world with the gospel. We serve others in various ways, only because we have participated in God's grace. And at this time, we are agents of that grace in the lives of others. Our own renewal becomes the means through which God renews the world. I've always admired Sir Ninian Stephen, a jurist, a high court judge, and a former Governor-General of Australia. At the time of his death, I read an article, and sadly, it focused on the honours he had amassed over his lifetime, including six knighthoods. In particular, the focus of the article was on the fact that he was only the third Australian to be honoured as being made a Knight of the Most Noble Order of the Garter this being the oldest of the orders of chivalry and sometimes considered the most exclusive club in the world 
because by, besides members of the royal family, it only had a few others. There were only ever 24 members of the order. The article hardly mentions Saninian's work as a jurist and a justice of the High Court, or his work after retiring as Governor General on the, on the Northern Ireland peace process, and as a judge on the International Court of Justice, or his work for charities and for general justice for all people. Nor did the article mention that all the various honours that Saninian received through his lifetime were a response to his effort for that justice that brings peace. They were not something he sought for their own value or his. I didn't blame the journalists responsible for the focus. They were writing knowing that it would be the trappings that Saninian had received that would provide the most interest, rather than the fact that he was a tireless worker for justice. The article highlighted the fact that many people are more interested in the external trappings rather than the real work that attracts such trappings, like titles and, and awards received as if it makes the person more important. It's this attraction to the externals that make it possible for the so-called reality shows to gain the audiences they do particularly those that focus on people famous simply for being rich and behaving badly. The Gospel tonight says that there are no rabbis or teachers. And for the reason for this is that before, the one, out before our Father, we are all equal. As companions, literally those who journey sharing bread, we all bring something to the understanding of the divine and our relationship with God. None of us relate to the divine in exactly the same way. So we have something each to teach. We teach each other about the mystery that is God. We also all have something to learn about that relationship. Extraordinary things are accomplished through ordinary people. Jesus grew up as the son of a carpenter. Some of the apostles were fishermen. Paul, a tent maker. We are clerks and teachers, barristers and nurses, bus drivers and doctors, bank tellers and engineers. We come to ministry in weakness and fear and in reality much trembling, very nervous. We may think we have the answers, but really we need to recognise that it is God working through us that it is important. Whatever we do at the basis of all things is the knowledge that it's God's mission not ours. This conversion is a call that disturbs and unsettles. It will and should drag us out of the status quo. It calls each and every one of us to the under uncomfortable position of being different to what we were. Because of this difference, we are then called to rejoice for it is here that we are set free to participate in the salvation of God. Called to teach in the name of Christ the teacher. Imparting the word of God and recognising the needs of our brothers and sisters and so responding. On this feast of Augustine, we recognise that first we are flawed human beings that are called to holiness for that's the example of Augustine, a flawed human being who comes to that deep relationship with God and so grows in wholeness. So he truly understands holiness. The Pharisees that we hear in today's gospel were no better than the fishermen. 
Indeed, they may be considered poorer because they saw their display of faith as something for themselves, a display beyond what is, was possible for the hard-working fishermen. The gospel we listen to tonight is addressed to all of us and calls for integrity and honesty, where there is no pulling of rank, no demand for respect or privilege or a hearing, no double standards, but a deep sense of equality and mutual respect. The call to serve and be of service. The image of Jesus washing the feet of his disciple is the ultimate rejection of position and title and the example of what we are called to be as church. When we enter into a true relationship with God, then the roles we have, the ministries we perform, whatever they may be, will lead us and those around us into that deeper relationship with God. They will be a source centering our attention, not making us the center of attention. We will be people who work for justice like Ninian and Stevens and the trappings will simply be unnecessary. Justin, as you begin and now embark upon, embark upon this new role in your life as a deacon in the church. You have the privilege of Mary at your side to support and love you in ministry. All of us, through our baptism, have been called into the priestly, prophetic and kingly relationship with God. You and Mary have given expression to that relationship in your love and service of each other and in your love you have and continue to have for your family. Now you are called to widen that priestly, prophetic and kingly relationship with God into this community of faith. The beautiful first reading that we listen to from the letter of St John sums it up at the heart of who you are and what you are about. Let there be love. For when you relate to others with love and in love, then you reveal the face of God. A face that many people will only experience through you. As you begin, I pray abundant blessings upon you and abundant blessings of thanks upon Mary. You must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. So I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast the, clear, uh, the, the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I do. do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you 
to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole church. And do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are to minister at the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessings on this his servant, whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate.
Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing this man we present, for in our judgment we believe him worthy to exercise sacred ministries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. I ask you to come and stand next to Justin. If you'd like to kneel, Justin. If you'd like to kneel down. (laughs) 
Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new in your eternal providence. You make provision for every age, as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry that they, may, they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favour on this servant of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon him, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that he may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of all the work of the ministry. May there abound in him every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority and purity of innocence and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in his conduct so that he, by the example of his way of life, may be inspired, may inspire the, limitate, the imitation of your holy people in offering the witness of a clear conscience. May he remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your son, who came not to be served but to serve, he may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Duck Justin, Mary's not tall. <laughs> <laughs> Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Amen. 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 
understand. And peace be with you, Justin. Congratulations. And I invite the deacons, the two deacons to come forward. <laughs> And let's say congratulations. Yes. You get to sit there. you'd like to be seated. I invite the family who are going to bring the gifts forward, if you'd like to do that.
and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with your word, and to strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Leo. Peace, Michael. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Christ. The body of 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 Christ. May partaking of Christ's table sanctify us, we pray, O Lord, that being made members of his body, we may become what we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. Could I invite you to be seated for just a moment? It's been quite unfortunate in the fact that in this COVID-19 uh, pandemic time, we celebrate an experience like this when the opportunity for a whole community to gather was not possible. 
but thank you for being with us tonight. And I thank um, my brother clergy who are here with us tonight and have come to share the experience. Again, we were unable to invite the whole of the Press Spirit to be able to be with us uh, because if we invite them, you couldn't be here. Um, <laughs> so we, we sort of limited our numbers as well so that you could be here. So I really appreciate your presence as we celebrate this gift of diaconate, gift of service. I cannot highlight enough um, a thank you to Justin for listening to God's call. I know it's not a call that's come recently. It's a call that's been coming over a very, very, very long time. And that's not just saying how old he is. Um, <laughs> it's saying that he has listened for a very long time. But he has lived that call, as I said already, in the love that he has for Mary and his family. Thank you for allowing him to be part of who we are. And thank you for all that you do with him, Mary. Um, the gift of your love and support for Justin is remarkable. It is, um, it is truly a gift and truly a witness to us of the importance of our mutual lives. And I thank you for the support that you've given to me and the love that you've shown to me also as Bishop of this diocese as a newbie in the place and I was saying to Father Patrick as I was coming down I think I've been to Milton Ulla Dulla more than I've been to anywhere else in the diocese <laughs> over the last two and a half years um, and always that welcome and that love has been there and I so greatly appreciate it um, to your family thank you for the gift of your father your grandfather um, as part of us I know your love for him will be something will continue to inspire him and support him. So thank you for that gift. Finally, to you, Justin. I look forward to working with you, to sharing ministry and to sharing that love of God. All right, so I now invite you to say a few words. albeit nervously, may I invite you to travel back with me about 800 years. Walk 20 minutes uphill to the church of San Damiano, just above the Basilica uh, at Assisi. Imagine the young Giovanni de Bertone, renamed Francis before the crucifix in that church of San Damiano, where he prayed. And you may hear Jesus say to him, Francis, go repair my church. Now identify with the reaction of young Francis in that church. Join him as he sells his textile merchant's father's expensive silk in order to buy the required bricks to commence the build, the rebuild. And then help him realise God was asking much more than a bricks and mortar task. I'm not suggesting we are other Francis's or we are saints far from it, but at least yet. But I think we are called to engage in a special building program. Jesus calls it missionary discipleship. Pope Francis also calls, it, calls us to be missionary disciples, even radical missionary disciples. What an immense privilege to go forth as Abraham, Moses and Jacob did with their wives, Sarah, Sephora and Rachel when they heard the prophetic call to go forth with what Pope Francis calls a gospel joy which enlivens the community of disciples. I think it's okay to recognise there are some broken parts of the church. But we must also recognise the rich and treasured history of our church's great achievements. Jesus promised to be with us to the end of time. 
And I feel re very reassured by that at times. I wonder what he imagines we're doing at times. I think the church's building program is best conducted in what Pope Francis describes as being a synodal church. And just today he announced a new synod of bishops to explore that very subject. And he made it clear he was not talking about a synodal church of the Bishop of Rome or bishops of the world, but of the worldwide church, the people of God. A church where we talk and walk and work and minister together, avoiding all forms of clericalism among deacons, priests, bishops, consecrated people and laity. I'm personally very hopeful that the Plenary Council gatherings will implant major steps in this growth. I trust we, like Francis of Assisi, will be genuinely amazed at the outstanding and enduring repair job, including the emancipation of women and other people who currently feel disconnected and not welcome to receive the body and blood of Christ. Today is another special day in our church's ongoing building program. One in which we come together to embrace another bricklayer in the service of the Lord and his people. And we've heard Bishop Brian explain to us who we are and whom we depend on in that regard. I'm proud but extremely humbled to respond to God's ongoing and evolving call. I trust the words of the psalmist that while a little older, I am still with adequate sap and still green. If you'll bear with me, I have a number of people I need to thank for my human, spiritual, intellectual and pastoral formation Archbishop Guilford Young of Hobart is first for the years of inspiration and liturgy formation he gave me. Father Peter Green, SJ, and Father Kevin O'Sullivan, and I trust all of them have a special vantage point tonight. Bishop Brian has referred to Mary several times, and I, of course, have indebted to her and to our children and their spouses and our beautiful grandchildren. <laughs> For years of unstinting love and support. I think I thank uh, Bishop Brian for being our leader, for being here tonight and all the times that he's come down to institute me and to guide me over the last couple of years for not being ageist and having faith in one who's young at heart. They are his words, I pinched them just tonight. <laughs> I thank Patrick Vaughan for his contribution to the Darson Diaconate Program and his personal friendship. Thank you, Patrick. The visiting clergy and liturgical ministers here today I especially thank the musicians and Simon Kidd, who sung so beautifully. Thank you, Simon, and musicians. I thank our sacristan, Anne Cerny, could never mention her name, so we don't know who she is, but she's right over there. Um, and the many who have travelled in uh, all sorts of distance, and those who have helped in so many ways, and we're yet to partake in some of the enormous effort that has gone on. I see Betty Cotter's not here. She's no doubt over-organising supper, but I'll thank her in a moment. It's indeed a great pleasure to thank Father Michael Dyer. He has been the essence of encouragement, 
support and a true friend. And I can tell you, as a proxy formation director, he is formidable. I thank my spiritual directors and other companions who over the years have guided or at least tried to guide me along the right path. I especially thank our parishioners, the leadership group and fellow pilgrims who have encouraged, challenged, remained faithful and prayed with me. This little event tonight, as beautiful and important as it is, would not have been possible without the enormous contribution of the personnel of the office of the Bishop. They have given a great deal for tonight and indeed in the experience of Father Michael and of me over the last four years. Daniel Hopper over here has done a wonderful work and I thank you Daniel personally. I thank all of you for your prayer, support and friendship and especially for ministering in the Lord's vineyard in all your multiple and varied ways. Please continue to pray that we can be, in the words of St Francis, instruments of God's peace, love, pardon, hope, faith, light and joy. As St Francis guided us, O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much to seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. So now it's time to recall another saying of St Francis, do all you can to preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. But I suspect he would have added, no one to sit down. And I thank all of you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And Bishop Brian. Bishop Brian, on behalf of Father Michael and the parishioners of St Mary Star of the Sea Milton, Ulladulla and Sussex Inlet, we thank you for making this great event of Justin's ordination possible and the wonderful journey we have experienced with you and Justin towards tonight's ordination. Thanks to Father Michael, we have been coached in the importance of the fact that we, the parishioners, are called to understand Justin's vocation, to accompany him through prayer and moral support in aid of his vocational discernment. This has also heightened our appreciation of you, Bishop Brian, and the gift of being present with you as you administered the holy orders of permanent diaconateship, diaconate on Justin. We also acknowledge the wonderful support we have received from your personal assistant, Lorraine Tobin, and the staff of the Bishop's Office in co coordinating all the background work, including the literature, printing, organising invitations, photography, and the list goes on. Thank you, Lorraine, and all the bishop's office. We also thank Graham Maynard and Trevor Kellum for the constant advice and help we receive from you in support of our parish. We have some gifts which are typical of and represent a taste of Milton. Would Graham Maynard please come forward? And Lorraine Tobin? She's not here today. Lorraine not here. So maybe Trevor Kellum could come. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look like Lorraine. <laughs>
Anne Hayward. I'd like you now to please present Bishop Brian's sweet and scrumptious hamper to do to um, to Graham. I get food as if I need it. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Know you know I will. Bishop Brian. <laughs> and Marge Christian has a huge box of chocolates, um, handmade treasures from Milton Woodstock <laughs> Chocolate Company um, for Lorraine Tobin and all the Patrick, staff got a good in trip the home. bishop's office. <laughs> <laughs> And now for the man of the moment, would Liz Baker please come forward? We're going to present you, Justin, with a, with a, with a gift of a matching green Dalmatic and Chasuble, a gift from our parishioners to be worn in ordinary time by, not, by a not quite so ordinary deacon. <laughs> <laughs> I now know who to blame. Yesterday I was at a, a funeral in Sydney of Mother Paul Killian, who was the last of the sisters of Our Lady Help of Christians who looked after the seminaries of Springwood and Manly and was, had a great influence on so many of us who went through the seminary. So I was walking out, one of the priests who I knew who was ordained when I was a, a young student, he turned around and looked at me and said, oh, gee, Mascord, you're looking for, like you've been in a good paddock. <laughs> I can now say it's Milton. <laughs> I'll call it Milton, okay? <laughs> Thank you for the beautiful gift, and um, I will share it with those at the office as well, just to say thank you to them, because uh, we are very fortunate. We try to do the best we can to support, and, and we are very lucky. We have an incredible team of people who work together um, to hopefully continue to bring about the reign of God. Um, in very simple and very practical ways. But I'm most grateful, first of all, to you as a community because it's you. You are the ones who bring life. You are the church and you bring life to the church and together we bring about the reign of God. So um, thank you. Thank you so much. So let's now stand for our final blessing. The Lord be with you. Give you that one. Bow down your heads for blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give to you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. And may he who has appointed you a steward of his mysteries make you an imitator of his son, Jesus Christ, and a minister of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may almighty God bless you all gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Damien, that's fantastic. No, no, there you go. That's fantastic.